This is AP Physics 2 um, FRQ question from 2019 and in this question they say that a student notices many air bubbles rising through the water in a large fish tank in aquarium. In the figure below, the circle represents one such air bubble and two incoming rays of light A and B are shown. Ray B points toward the center of the circle on the diagram. Draw the paths of ray A and B as they go through the bubble and back into the water. And your diagram should clearly show what happens to the rays at each interference. So inside of water, because um, spheres, the balloons of air inside of the water, have different index of refraction, so the bubble uh, behaves like a concave lens and the concave lens are known as diverging lenses and as the rays diverge after falling on the concave lens. So uh, the air bubble is a sphere with a convex surface and when the light reaches it, the light is reflected within the water as in a concave lens and the um, refractive index of air would be 1 and the refractive index of water would be 1.33. And since the water refractive index is greater than air, the uh, air bubbles in the water will behave like a concave lens. And in a concave lens, when the rays are reaching the lens, they diverge so any ray that passes through the center will go straight any ray that passes through the center will go straight or this way but any ray that comes uh, parallel to the axis uh, will have to diverge and go under um, the angle away from the center so for the A ray, um, if this would be the straight line going on, then the ray would diverge in this direction. And then for the B light or B ray, because it's coming to the center, it will continue going in a straight line. Also the incident ray, so if this was perpendicular to the surface, the incident ray is going to be smaller than the refracted ray because the index of refraction for the air is less than index of refraction for the water. And then by the time the ray reaches the end of the bubble, again the index of um, the incident uh, angle in this case is going to be um, greater than the one that when the ray is coming out. So when the ray is coming out of the air into the water, uh, it will create the refracted angle again, which is smaller than the one that was inside of the air. For the next question, they say that the bubble has a volume V1 and air inside is has the density of rho A and the water around it has a density of rho w and then the air bubble starts at rest and has a speed of vf when it has uh, risen to the height of h assume that the change in the bubble's volume is negligible derive an expression for the mechanical energy dissipated by drag forces as the bubble rises this distance, express your answer in terms of the given quantities and fundamental constants as appropriate. So when I look at the bubble, the forces acting on the bubble when it is rising are the buoyancy force and the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is uh, lower than the force of buoyancy and they also have the force of the drag force from the water to slow it down so um, let's call it D the force of the drag force 
and um, and then there's going to be the acceleration because the bubble starts with initial velocity and then it accelerates. The information that is given in A are the density of the water, the density of the air, then the height it travels before it reaches the final velocity, and it has the volume. I can find acceleration by um, using the DA formula, the way we call it in our classroom. So because the distance is given and is average velocity, initial plus the final, divided by 2 times the time. And acceleration is change of the velocity, so the final minus initial over the time. I can express the time and replace it instead of the time in the first equation. So I will have the final velocity minus zero divided by the acceleration. So the height is equal to the final velocity over two times the final velocity over the acceleration. So the final velocity squared is equal to two h times the acceleration. So acceleration is going to be the final velocity squared divided by 2h. So we have this part. Now from the second Newton's law, we have that f net is equal to ma. So the net force, we have the buoyancy force, which is positive, minus the drag force, minus mg equals to ma and a we just found is v squared uh, final over 2h but i'm going to keep just a for now then the buoyancy force is equal to the volume of the water being uh, the weight of the volume of the water being displaced by the bubble which is the density of the water times the volume of the uh, bubble times g minus the drag force, so I'm just call it d, minus the mass of the bubble, which is the density of the air, times the volume times g, and equals to the mass of the bubble, which is the density of the air, the volume, and then we have acceleration. If I solve this uh, equation for um, the drag force, I will have the drag force is equal to rho of the water, Vg, minus rho of the air, V, and then I'm going to take it out, and then I have G plus A if I move row of the air volume times the acceleration on one side and factor out uh, row of the air v um, and that is what the drag force is going to be equal to the question they ask you to derive the expression for the mechanical energy dissipated by the drag force so what i found is just the force but not the energy energy would be the work so the work done by the drag force the work is equal to, so let's call it D, the drag force, is the drag force times the distance it travels, which is H. So I have to multiply this whole expression by H, and that will give me rho of the water, the volume of the bubble, GH, minus the rho of the air, v times it by h and then i have g and now i can replace uh, the value of a the one that i found earlier so we, we squared final over 2h so i will have v squared final over 2h and all of that in the parentheses so the work done by the drag force is going to be equal to all this you could distribute this in here and cancel h 
but I'm gonna leave it the way I have it. For the next question, they say that at a particular instant, one bubble is 4.5 meters below the water surface. The surface of the water is at sea level and the density of the water is 10 to the third kilogram per meter cubic. Determine the absolute pressure in the bubble at this location. So if the sea bubble is um, at the height of 4.5 meters above the water and the pressure, atmospheric pressure um, on the top of the water is 10 to the fifth Pascal, then the absolute pressure is going to be the sum of both pressures, which is P um, sub zero plus rho GH and rho of water, the density of water. So if I plug in these numbers, I have 10 to the fifth times the density of water, 10 to the third times 10. This one is plus, plus the density of water, G, and then the H is 4.5. So the absolute pressure is equal to 1.45, 10 to the fifth Pascal, or I can say it is 1.45 atmospheric pressure. For the next question, they say that the, uh, the bubble has a volume V1 when it is 4.5 meters below the water surface. Assume that the temperature of the air in the bubble remains constant as it rises. In terms of V1, calculate the volume of the bubble when it is just below the surface of the water. So I can use um, P, P1 v1 over t1 is equal to p2 v2 over t2 so if the temperature is staying the same or isothermal process then i can just rewrite without the t temperatures will be cancelled the pressure at the top so um, if this is the pressure for one that's the one that we just calculated in first part of um, question C and here at the top the pressure is going to be P sub zero because there is no more water on the top of the bubble right before it reaches the top so for P1 I have um, 1.45 atmospheric pressure and the volume uh, one and equals to 10 to the fifth right before it reaches the top of the water and V2. I can cancel 10 to the fifth from both sides. Then the volume of the bubble on the top is gonna be, or right before it reaches the top of the water is 1.45 V1. And then the last part of this question, they ask you if the air in the bubble cooled as it rose, the volume of the bubble would be less than the value uh, calculated in part C2. Uh, use the physical principles to briefly explain why. So again, if we have the temperature cooling down as it is rising, and we have P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. So P2 is the pressure right before it rises, which is zero. V2 um, is uh, going to be different. It's not the same as we found in two because the temperature is changing. And the temperature is cooling down, so that means the temperature right here is getting smaller. So this temperature is getting smaller compared to the initial temperature 
uh, of the bubble at the bottom or at the height h that we started with. So if the initial values stay the same as they have been, so pressure, the volume, and the temperature at 1, then and the pressure on the top is the atmospheric pressure. And since T2 is getting smaller as it rises, then V2 is also going to be smaller as it rises to, um, to keep the same uh, proportions as we had before. In other words, the volume is not going to expand as much if the temperature cools down inside of the bubble. And another explanation of it would be um, it's not going to be expanding because when the temperature lows down, the kinetic energy of the gas is decreasing. That means there's going to be less interaction of the molecules of the gas with the surface of the bubble. So the new bubble doesn't expand as much due to the uh, unbalanced forces inside of the and outside of the bubble. And this is all I have for this uh, 2019 AP Physics 2 uh, FRQ question. Thank you for watching. Um, go ahead and push the button like if you do like it and if it helps you to understand this concept better. And I hope I see you in my future videos.